So nowadays, it's pretty common knowledge to say that Ubisoft just flat out sucks. You suck! Why don't you shut the hell up? But as the saying goes, a broken clock is right twice a day. And over the last decade or so, there's really only been one game that they've put out that I've really pumped a ton of hours into and actually had a lot of fun playing. And that wonderful game is Rainbow Six Siege. This game gives me a shot of adrenaline like no other game ever can or ever has. The adrenaline. It floods your whole body. When you clutch that 1v3 and defuse the bomb for the win, or when you get that coveted ace and somehow outsmart an entire team, there is just no better feeling. But on the other end, when you get killed 10 seconds after spawning by a peeker, or you're on the receiving end of that 1v5 loss, there is no feeling lower. Ah! Oh! Me! I'm not normally a sweaty, competitive, irrational gamer, but when I play this game, I am. But like every other Ubisoft gamer franchise, if that thing's making money, you gotta milk it into the ground for every possible cent it could be worth. And because of that, over the years, Rainbow Six Siege has kind of evolved and changed into just another basic hero-ish shooter with a Tom Clancy spin. In a lot of ways, has lost a lot of its identity that it originally set out with and started with, kind of just like every other Ubisoft franchise. So today we're gonna take a deeper dive into this game, Rainbow Six Siege, and we're gonna ask the question, is this a great game? Was it ever a great game to begin with? And if so, is it still? And most importantly, we're gonna take a look and see what makes this game truly a messy masterpiece. So just to get a little bit of preamble out of the way real quick, over the last few years, this has been a game that has been near and dear to my heart. This game came out in 2015 when I was just a wee lad just getting into high school. And yes, the game did not launch the way that we were hoping or expecting, but nonetheless, it was still a great game. I have vivid memories of my middle school and high school days, coming home from the skate park at like 10, 11 at night, just to hop on and play Siege on the Xbox with the exact same buddies. But all that to say, this game has held a special place in my heart for a long time. And listen, before we really get down to the nitty gritty of this video, Video. I'm not some crazy analyst of this game. I'm not the type of person who really gives a shit about my rank status in a game. I'm not sitting there meticulously analyzing recoil patterns or frame rates on a game. That's way overboard to me and always takes something that should just be flat out fun and turns it into work. And that's just not why I'm playing video games, to be honest. However, with that aside, I've been playing this game for years, like I was saying, since launch. So I think I have a pretty good understanding of how this game has progressed, how it's improved, how it's declined, where it was, and where we are today. So just to get down to it, let's start off with talking about what makes this a great, awesome game. For those unaware, Siege is a 5v5, slower, tactical, hero-ish shooter, where the goal can shift ever so slightly match to match. You could be having to go extract a hostage, just secure an area, or go defuse a bomb. And in order to do this, there's a wide variety of different operators that have different tactical abilities to help give you an edge in the match. Some of these operators having abilities so simple as a guy named Doc, who's able to just have an instant revive pistol and pick up his teammates and himself in Instantly. And others having abilities that are a little bit out of this world to a point that kind of breaks immersion, like this stupid bitch who can literally fucking clone herself. What with that tiny explanation of the game out of the way, that's really what kind of set Siege apart back in its heyday. The overall variability in this game was just fucking great. Not every gamer is made the same, we all have different styles of play that we prefer and like. Some players prefer to play a bit more aggressive, roaming around the map trying to pick off stragglers. But others, much like myself, are a little bit too pussy to do that, and we stay within a quick sprint range of the objective, just making sure everything's fortified and defended. And that's one of the great things about this game. This game doesn't force you into any particular playstyle at all. You really get to choose. And instead, it allows you to pick a style that suits you, and if you have a full squad, your team. Having, at least at the time of recording this, a little bit over 60 different operators with different varying abilities. While yes, there are a lot of operators, a lot of them are very similar and have nearly identical abilities, making the choice really more a matter of gun preference. Which, when you have such weird, kind of unique guns in a game like this, that's not such a bad thing. The guns are pretty cool in this game, and with the game only having originally started out with 20, it just shows how much Ubisoft has honestly put into this game and updated it over the last few years. Ugh, that feels weird coming out of my mouth. But don't get it twisted, Ubisoft, you still fucking suck. This guy stinks! But just kinda adding on to that, Ubisoft has really supported this game like none of their others. From dropping consistent seasonal updates, whether it being new maps or at least reworks of old ones, new operators, new characters, new skins for guns, or your operators you already have. Or if we're super lucky, we get one of those timed special events. In particular, the Halloween one that they do every so often, the hide and seek. One of the coolest modes ever, it makes me so mad that they don't have an arcade mode where they just put all of their little side limited modes in because those are pretty fucking fun. I'm not gonna lie. I would literally come and 
play this game just for that old 3v3 western with the shotties and pistols. That was fucking sick. But all in all, Ubisoft has done a lot to keep this game afloat, and I gotta give them props for that. But more important than anything, when this game is running on all cylinders, and it's working the way it's supposed to, Rainbow Six Siege is a hell of a fun time, man. I mean, you can support a game all you want, but if it's not fun and it's not worth playing, then who gives a shit? But Siege is unlike any other shooter in my opinion. I can't really put my finger on what it is. This game gives me a shot of adrenaline and gives me a rush like no other game imaginable. It's not even close. And this game does something great that sets it apart and makes it so much fun. And that's because this game doesn't require you to have some crazy quick reflexes where you're just drop shotting and bunny hopping around every corner. Win or loss, every match has so much more to do with strategy and teamwork than it does anything else. Have enough map knowledge on a certain map? You can put holes into a wall and get just the perfect angle halfway across the map. Or hear some audio cue from the enemies and immediately know the perfect route to take to go around and flank them. This game really tries to incentivize you to always get better and be better and to always learn. And in a way I'd say, if Call of Duty is checkers, Rainbow Six Siege is chess. Creating a gameplay loop that either just makes you furious and wanting to get better so you just have that one more match mentality, or you walk away from the match feeling like Big Boss in Metal Gear. Kept you waiting, huh? And because of that, this game can truly just enthrall you like no other game. And because of that huge lean on strategy that this game has, it's kind of birthed an awesome community online and on YouTube. Just a ton of different creators making tips and tricks on how to make you a better player, improve your map knowledge, or just make you better at the game as a whole. Like I was saying earlier, I'm not a huge fan of really analyzing every nook and cranny of a game's mechanics, but I do understand why people do it. And at the end of the day, if watching some YouTube video tells you to add a certain attachment makes you a better player, more power to you, I guess, man. But overall, Siege has a lot going for it, and it can truly have a fun, awesome, rewarding gameplay loop for those willing to sit down and just get better at the game. But on the other hand, over the years, Rainbow Six Siege, for better or worse, has changed in a lot of ways. And especially recently, has kind of become another great example of what Ubisoft is oh so great at, and that's, like I said earlier, milking one of its games or franchises into the fucking ground for every cent it can possibly be worth. So now it's time for the fun part, the part I know you came to see. Let's see how Ubisoft is currently failing to innovate on one of their cash cow games, and let's take a look at how over the years they've turned a game that was once a serious tactical mature shooter into just a sweaty hero shooter fever dream nightmare of what it used to be. So all in all, I'd like to think this game can be summed up very simply. It was a game that at one time started out in a very specific lane, a very specific spot but over time with slow small different changes has just become like every other fucking live service multiplayer game out there and over the years it's kind of just pushed its fans out into the cold and said hey you can come back into this warm cabin if you just give me a 20 bucks for this rick and morty skin bitch and that's a big part of what's ruining siege over the years they clearly know that they need to innovate but instead of perfecting and adding on to a game that was already great they go the way of innovating by just adding bigger and different things and over time doing it that way has just eroded the actual identity this game started out with that so much Many people loved and now has just become very similar to every other shooter out there at this point and consistently they're just selling new operators and skins at such high margins it doesn't even make sense like this isn't just rainbow six siege right this is video games as a whole right now but what happened to back in the days when you could buy a map pack for four different maps a zombies map and a bunch of skins for 20 bucks every season what happened to that? Instead, now you get this dumb fucking legendary skin and a gun skin for literally $20. What in the actual fuck? And especially in Siege, the skins are garbage now. I thought I was playing Siege. I came here to get like that semi-SWAT experience feeling like an anti-terrorist guy. Come on, Ubisoft. Why have you done this to your game? Why? Like I was saying, this isn't just Rainbow Six Siege. This is a problem in so many games. But just because everyone's doing it does not make it okay. Just because everyone else around you is being an asshole does not mean it's cool for you to be an asshole. And for the life of me, I cannot understand how games start out one specific way and over years and over time, they just become the exact same amalgamation of battle passes and live service bullshit every single time. I cannot understand it. Like seriously, if companies would just put out cool skins, put out cool new maps and charges for it, they were actually worth it, I would gladly spend $20. But when you just get charged up the ass for a dumb skin, it makes no fucking sense. And because they've been doing this, this game has kind of lost a lot of like the vibes and the aesthetic that really drew me into the game to begin with. And here's a good example. We started out with sledgehammers and grenade launchers, and now we got this fucking guy who shoots nano chip hornets at people. What in the actual fuck? 
And not only that, let me just give you a little example just to infuriate you just a little bit more. Every season, the community gets so hyped for this new operator that's coming, right? But somehow, some way, every time, they fail to see that it's just a reskin different version of the exact same operator that's already in the game. I cannot believe we've been so blind. And here's a perfect example, right? This new guy, Solace, that came out just in this last season from when I'm recording. He's able to see electronics through walls, which on paper, whoa, that sounds pretty interesting, right? I mean, you can tell if the enemies are checking cams or something outside of a wall and then go get them for an easy kill. And yeah, to a certain extent, I'd say that's somewhat new. But what if I told you there's a character who, in a lot of situations, is even better than Solace? And what if I told you not only that that character already existed, but has existed since launch. Solus is just a reskin worse version of Pulse. How do we not see that? Solus can see electronics through walls and that's great and all, that's very circumstantial though. All you gotta do with Pulse is have a warm body moving around and he can get their heartbeat. Boom, and that is so much more helpful. You don't need to even have someone checking cams at all. You can just see them through the wall. All you need is a warm body and Pulse knows exactly where it is. But yet we get so excited for this new operator thinking it's some groundbreaking innovative thing when it's just flat out not. And what about Ace and Habana? I guess we don't even need to go there, right? That's pretty obvious. I hope my point's been made. So when we get these dumb add-on characters that have nearly an identical ability to one that's been there, it's hard to not just feel played. Got he! <laughs> Got he! <laughs> But regardless, charging people up the ass for nearly an identical product and saying it's different is a little jacked up, it's a little pathetic, but it is what it is, and we gotta vote with our wallets, and so far, we haven't. I mean, yeah, I love that they add new content, I really do, but if the content is just a reskin of something that's already been there, and you throw it at us with a hefty price tag, it's just not worth it. Especially when you got all these other bundles and battle passes on top of it, it just comes off as predatory and money grubbing in every possible way. And it seems like people are just blind, or they don't want to talk about it, and I don't know if this is exactly the case, but something you see a lot on YouTube is, this game is making a lot of people's careers. A lot of people have an entire channel based on this game, and they do great from it, and that's fucking awesome, but at a certain extent, those people aren't gonna bite the hand that feeds them, if you know what I mean. So instead, people like that often focus on the little nuances and things that actually do make things different and make it better in some way, shape, or form, and oftentimes glossing over the things that are just shysty and fucked up. But that's no fault of theirs, honestly, I get it. That's what their whole channel is based off of. That's what they do, that's what they play, that's what they love, that's what they're passionate for, so it's not their fault. It is what it is, you know? But all in all, at a certain point, I understand why Ubisoft has to do this. You gotta keep the game moving, and if the game isn't making money, there's no way to put money into the game, and therefore the game is going to die. So, and to a certain extent, they have to be dropping those dumbass Rick and Morty skins because if they don't, this game is going to be dead and there's going to be nothing anyone can do about it. It's just going to die. In order for the game to stay afloat, it has to make money. However, over the years, Ubisoft has seemingly been doing just enough to keep this boat afloat, if that makes sense. Never really focusing on sailing to newer, better, different waters and instead just trying to do everything they can to keep that boat afloat for as long as fucking possible. Like I said, and I'll say it again, milking this game and franchise for every single cent it can possibly be worth. Remember, our passion and something that we love doing and have put a ton of time into, at the end of the day is a fucking business. And the whole point of a business is to make money. If it's not making money, it's not working. And if you don't believe me, that's fine. But ask yourself this question. Where the fuck is Rainbow Six Siege 2? Where is it? I mean, they made a whole fucking garbage siege game off of a limited time mode, which by the way, fucking sucked. Thanks Ubisoft for making another lame asset flip and then fucking telling us to go buy it and kind of riding off the back of the fucking siege coattails. But Rainbow Six Extraction is so bad, so phoned in, so bereft of ideas and effort. I can't believe that a dev team worked for more than four years on this. I can't believe that Ubisoft thought that this would be enough to justify an $80 price tag and microtransactions on top. You pieces of shit. You knew what you were doing. You're just cannibalizing the only fans you have left until they're all gone. What are you doing? Little tangent here, but this game fucking hurt me. The initial teaser trailer for this made the game look like it was gonna be sick. I basically thought it was gonna be a bunch of terrorist hunt missions, but with uh, siege operators like almost like Left 4 Dead, but like super tactical. That would have been so sick, but instead it's just fucking garbage. And unfortunately it did the exact same thing that so many games do. We get it, we buy it, we talk about it, we watch a couple YouTube videos, and then it's gone into history like a fart in the wind a month later. But all that aside, and the point being, they can spend all this time, money, and effort on making this lame fucking asset flip of a game, but they can't make another core experience of Rainbow Six Siege in the last eight years? 
Are you fucking out of your mind? You understand this is the very same company that drops a new Assassin's Creed game that's fucking 40 plus hours every year, and they cannot make a new Siege game. What in the actual fuck Ubisoft, what are you doing? But here's the deal, at least at this point, they have no incentive to make a new Siege game anytime soon in my opinion. Why would they put all that time and effort into making a new engine, and new graphics, and new characters, and new maps, when they can just do another fucking lame skin bundle and drop Rick and Morty skins for $20 again and make bank? I mean, like, have you ever wondered what happened in the Splinter Cell games? Back in my younger days, these games were fucking awesome. They were innovative, they were groundbreaking, so what the fuck happened to them? Here's the deal, how do you make money from a single player experience? How do you make money from an experience people are gonna play once, maybe twice, and that's it? I mean, yeah, it can be done, look at the new God of War games or the Last of Us games, but those games take a lot of time, a lot of effort and a ton of money to produce. And maybe it's due to laziness, maybe they just don't care, but that's seemingly time, money, and effort that they don't want to invest or they just don't have. And so instead, they do what they always do with everything. They milk it for every last possible cent it's fucking worth. And now, leaving us with a game that bluntly is outdated as fuck and feels like it. The guns, while I was saying, yeah, there's some cool variation to them, they don't feel that good at all. You get hardly any fucking feedback whatsoever. The graphics, while yeah, being passable, they're not so hot for nowadays. And yes, the way that the destruction works and stuff, that's great. And yes, in general, while they do add and support and innovate on this game to some degree, bluntly, half the shit they add is just fucking garbage. And in my honest opinion, it seems like all the content that the game had on launch, all the maps and operators, were the perfect version of the game. And when in a game that's approaching eight years old is not as good as it was six years ago, there's something really wrong there. More time should lead to a better overall polished awesome experience, but instead it's just led to more content and more isn't always better. And over time it seems like all this game has done is just make Ubisoft boatloads of cash that they never really reinvest back into the game or into the franchise as a whole, at least not in the way that we really want them to. And at the end of the day, it's not Rainbow Six Siege's fault, it's Ubisoft's fault. They are the problem. And at this point, they're just too big. There were just so many people and so many different rungs up the ladder now to where at this point, really anything that's innovative just kind of gets left on the cutting room floor. And instead what this game does is it changes ever so slightly over every seasonal update. And over the span of nearly a decade, the game has just totally changed into something it just wasn't really when it first started. A game with an identity crisis. A game that at one time was the definitive multiplayer tactical shooter for anyone to play, but has slowly just morphed into a different hero shooter with a Tom Clancy spin. Because what's the point in innovating if it's still making money? Why push the envelope when you can just do the exact same thing over and over? So in conclusion, is Rainbow Six Siege a great game? Was it ever? And if so, is it still? And to be honest, that's a hard question to answer. Siege is a game that has some awesome gameplay and some fucking great ideas. However, just about everything else besides the gameplay, everything surrounding that fucks up the experience. And in a lot of ways really starts to ruin something that on the surface was really perfect. So really the answer is up to you. Do you think Siege is great? Did you ever? And you know, honestly, the answer is really up to the eye of the beholder. But to me, that's what truly makes this game, Rainbow Six Siege, a messy masterpiece. All right, guys, that's the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This is a game I've loved growing up. This is a game I've played for so long, and you know, I uh, think about a few weeks ago, I jumped back into this game, and I just realized it is not at all what I remember playing when I was younger, so I just had to make this video. Thank you for watching. If you wanna see more content like this, check out my channel. I got a bunch of different videos, and I'm gonna be making a lot more of these messy masterpiece videos along the way, so if you made it this far, truly, thank you. Subscribe, like, comment, do all that dumb shit, do whatever makes you happy, and I'll see you guys again in the next one. Thanks, guys. Peace. Peace. Later. Let my hat.